after traveling from Damascus to the Christian cities of Sednaya and Malula, and then from Damascus to the Krak du Chevalier and Homs, we left Homs to the ancient Roman era town of Palmyra. Our first stop, a police station next to a school in Homs with portraits of both President Bashar al-Assad and his father, Hafiz al-Assad. After our guide Tehsi Rasadi got the necessary permissions, we set out on the 160-odd kilometer drive to Palmyra. Homs is Syria's third largest city after Aleppo in the north and Damascus, about 200 kilometers to the south. For approximately 2,000 years, Homs, which has easy access to the Mediterranean Sea, has been a key agricultural market, production site and trade center. The trees lean towards the way we are heading as if pointing the way to Palmyra. Amar, our driver, filled up the tank as we waited behind a family in a pickup truck. Despite US-led sanctions, gas is just 2.25 Syrian pounds a litre, 44 paise, or a ridiculous 45 American cents for 100 litres in current conversion rates. The green landscape turned to dusty desert terrain. As the sun beat down on a near-empty, well-paved road, we were stopped again and again at check posts that we were not supposed to film. We passed the Palmyra Citadel, Kalat, originally built in the 13th century and then reinforced in the 16th century by Fakhreddin al-Mani. The Kalat ibn Mani castle is also known as the Mamluk Citadel. It was retaken by Syrian forces in March 2016. Amar bought some pomegranates and a comic book for Adnan and Seema, his children, more of whom in a bit. He and his family left Palmyra twice and our first glimpse of the city told us why. A virtual ghost town, it seems the trees are the only living beings left. Homes and buildings damaged and destroyed. A dome of a mosque brought down. The minaret still standing. Roofs tilting at almost impossible angles. Empty alleys as far as the eye can see. Facades torn off as if by a giant. Bullet and rocket holes in the walls. Stories collapsing like a pack of cards after airstrikes. A traffic light that doesn't stop anyone anymore. And doors that don't have to keep anyone out. Since there is practically no one left. Palmyra had 50,000 inhabitants according to a 2005 census, rising to about 70,000 in 2015 as refugees from other parts of Syria fled the fighting. Today, it is said there are no more than 200 people in the modern city. If you want to know what the sound of silence is, well, this is it, except for the rumble of thunder. The many streets of Palmyra city completely abandoned a ghost town which was once about 50,000 strong. Now the population is less than 200. Daesh, the so-called proclaimed Islamic State, occupied the city and the ruins twice in March 2015 and then again in December 2016 before a Russian and Syrian offensive finally drove them out in March 2017. But more than a year and a half later, except for a few vestiges of electricity that have been restored, the city is still a ghost town a literal no-man's land. Palmyra saw widespread looting and damage by all sides. Daesh, or the so-called Islamic State terror group, attacked and captured the area, including the ruins, in May 2015. In March 2016, Syrian forces, supported by Russian airstrikes, recaptured the area. After heavy fighting, Daesh briefly reoccupied the city in December 2016. Another offensive finally drove them out in March 2017. They cleared the house, so they are no mind. Signs painted on the walls of houses mean Nyet, where Russian teams have cleared mines planted before Daesh's final retreat. 
The Heliopolis was a popular three-star hotel, a stone's throw from the ruins when 150,000 tourists came here every year. A nearby building has its roof blown out by explosives or in by airstrikes, we can't say. There were no cars to park or people to dive into the hotel's now defunct swimming pool. A short drive away, our destination. The monumental ruins of the great city of Palmyra that was one of the most important cultural centers of the ancient world. Originally founded near a fertile natural oasis, it was established sometime during the 3rd millennium BC as the settlement of Tadmor and became a leading city of the Near East and a major trading post on the Silk Road. The architecture of Palmyra combined Greco-Roman styles with those of Persia and Arabia. But the glorious remains etched in our minds through past pictures are now reduced to this. The temple of Baal Shamin was dedicated to the Canaanite and pagan sky god and was considered the second most important structure of the ruins. Its earliest phase dates to the late 2nd century BC. Its altar was built in 115 AD and the temple was substantially rebuilt in 131 AD. With the spread of Christianity in the region in the 5th century AD, the temple was converted to a church. It was one of the most complete ancient structures in Palmyra. In 1980, UNESCO designated it as a World Heritage Site. A picture provided to us by a restorer in charge shows what it looked like before Daesh captured the area and blew it up in the summer of 2015. Photos released by Daesh show the Greco-Roman temple being packed with large quantities of explosives and men placing barrels connected with detonating cord around the interior and several exterior columns. They then detonated them, bringing down the inner sanctum or cellar and its surrounding pillars. A UN agency then published before and after satellite pictures. UNESCO, the UN's cultural organization, described the deliberate destruction of Syria's cultural heritage as a war crime. The blowing up came a week after the beheading of 83-year-old Khaled al-Assad, the retired chief archaeologist at Palmyra who refused to cooperate with Daesh. Al-Assad helped spirit out what could be before the terrorists arrived. But he was captured and tortured in an attempt to get him to reveal the location of the ancient artifacts that he had helped hide. His alleged crime, serving as director of idolatry. Tell us a little bit more about what this place was. Uh, it was ex exactly the location of uh, the temple, uh, which is Baal mm -hmm. temple dedicated to uh, God of heavens and also the moon and the sun at the same time, dating back mostly to the 2nd and 3rd century AD. But actually the location of the cellar or the sanctuary, the main sanctuary, was situated at that point here. Right. Exactly. So it was well preserved before the Islamic State? It was in a very good situation, more that you can say well preserved. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think here uh, that uh, it was destroyed completely, yeah. even the basement of it. Mm -hmm. And the stones were moved at that side, as we see it over there. It's not the original, lo original location for it, in order to make maybe complete missing for the uh, history of Palmera. So how does it make you feel? You've been here probably last eight years ago, is that correct? Yeah, before the last eight How years. does it make you feel when you see this? I'm so sad actually. Actually, I'm so sad to see that. Anyway, but uh, I'm sure by the uh, help of the uh, Syrian people, who, especially uh, the people of Palmyra and the Directorate of, uh, of Antiquities in Syria, uh, every stone will be back from there to here and reconstruct to be more beautiful than before. Thank you. Welcome, thank you. Talking about reconstruction, the new Palmyra project has since launched an attempt to digitally preserve heritage sites by creating a 3D model in virtual space with digital tools. One of the most recognizable structures is the remarkable monumental arch. Also known as the Triumphal Arch or Victory Arch, it was constructed during the reign of Emperor Septimus Severus, who ruled from 193 to 211 AD. 
So the main arch was about 12 meter high in the middle. With, if you look at the arch on the left side, with uh, it's a PA we call it or open open gate, other gate. So the arch, uh, the traces of the arch is over there. Then coming to the to the uh, to that point, and then uh, the other arch start from here, which is the main one in the middle, to the other part we see it opposite here. Then the arch which is uh, on the left side, which is broken, uh, to the middle of that one. I mean, it's one big in the middle and two on the two sides. This destruction is not by chance. They have no. done it specifically. Specifically, the exactly. What is yeah, the yeah. reason for The that? reason is to destroy the most important ruins in Palmyra, which is clear and very uh, well preserved from uh, 2nd century AD. And the reason for destroying that is also deeper. They are trying to destroy an idea. To destroy the, the culture, exactly, the culture of Syria. But whatever they do, we can reconstruct not only this, we reconstruct all Palmyra again. Like you were saying, there have been many such different instances in world history, whether it was Hiroshima, whether it was Germany. Yeah. So your hope is that it will come back again from the ashes. Surely, surely. And surely will, surely will be back. Everything as it was. As we have seen in Malula, they destroyed the main apps in Malula. Uh, and it's rec reconstructed by the hands of the M Malula people. This is a partial 3D model created by the new Palmyra project. Daesh's cultural cleansing drive continued at the Temple of Bel or Baal. When we entered, there was just one armed Syrian guard who joked about leftover explosives. <laughs> we also had a Syrian army minder with us. The temple was consecrated to the Mesopotamian god Bel, worshipped at Palmyra and triad with the lunar god Uglybol and the sun god Yahibol. It formed the center of religious life in Palmyra and was dedicated in 32 AD. Its ruins were considered among the best preserved at Palmyra until Daesh, also known by the acronym ISIS or ISIL, destroyed them in August 2015. Even the gods, it seems, are angry with the devastation. Like the roads we travelled on, the 4G network was also smooth and fast, even allowing us to live-tweet these scenes to the world, instantly getting hits. What is the significance of the Temple of Baal here? Uh, this temple is uh, actually for uh, God Bel, uh, who is originally Phoenician God, uh, which means uh, the Bel, the word itself, Bel, means the master. And he is he here in Palmyra is the God of Gods. So for there, uh, a very big temple, which is about 205 by 210 meters, was built or dedicated to the God Bel himself. And is there a date then it was dedicated, which is significant, the 7th? Uh, 7th April. Exactly, it was uh, seven, uh, because you know, seven is holy number during the history. And anyway, uh, if we say that we have seven uh, uh, heavens or seven skies, we have seven floors, uh, the week of the day uh, uh, related with number seven. So for there, it was built at 7th April, uh, 32 AD. Now describe to us what you last saw here, which is probably eight years ago. Uh, so uh, when we used to come here, uh, before the before eight years actually it was uh, something very magnificent as a size as I told you 205 by 210 meters and the cellar in the middle uh, which is now completely destroyed except uh, the uh, main outer entrance to the uh, cellar itself. There were many other entrances after this? Uh, no, just behind this entrance about two meters other entrance and you enter inside. Now, we saw some signs outside which were obviously written by Daesh in black. Yeah. Uh, what did they mean by writing those words? What were they trying to say and what do you interpret from that? Uh, so, actually it's written it, uh, in Arabic language. It's forbidden to enter, which is Mamnua for the Madani and Al-Ikhwa in Arabic language, which means exactly it's not allowed for the civilian 
and our brothers, which means Daesh brothers, but why would uh, the say members that? of, uh, maybe it was a uh, main thing, maybe if uh, for uh, making the explosion here, because it's very big explosion, as uh, the uh, army told us, they uh, uh, they used about 10,000 tons yeah. to destroy uh, of explosive materials to destroy that cellar. Yeah. So and uh, uh, even for the brothers. Uh, which is written out there, uh, it's forbidden to enter, civilian and brothers. Uh, so uh, maybe uh, they wanted to steal something from uh, this temple and they don't uh, uh, want anybody to see them. So despite this destruction, you're still so confident that it will again be restored to its magnificence and we will see tourists from all over the world here again. Uh, surely, uh, uh, it will be rebuilt, but uh, now what do I see? That means they need a long time to be built. Uh, I mean, the government uh, will spend too much money and uh, uh, to build that uh, building and others, I mean, restoring here and there. Uh, in the same time, uh, so uh, it will be back, but uh, the cost will be very high. So both time and cost will take a long time to even get back to what it was before Daesh occupied mm -hmm. the ruins. You mean for, for the tourist? The tourist, I think, uh, will be back here in a number which is maybe double or three times of the number before the time of the occupation here, I mean by Daesh and others. Because now we have uh, other side, which is it's a war exactly, uh, uh, but it's a kind of reputation from the other side. Inshallah. 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 Thank you so much. Welcome. Daesh, or the self-proclaimed Islamic State, occupied the city of Palmyra and the ruins twice. First in May 2015 and then after they were briefly driven out in December 2016. They carried out a purposeful and concerted effort of cultural terrorism, destroying icons that had stood the vestiges of time blowing up temples, destroying works of art. Now, after they were finally driven out in March 2017, archaeologists and experts hope that the ruins of Palmyra can rise up from the ashes like the phoenix by spring 2019. Asadi walked up the small hill of rubble to pay homage to what's left. He held his ears as if he could hear the explosions that destroy the temple. Gingerly removing debris so as not to disturb future preservers and restorers, he's heartbroken about the loss, but confident it'll be back to its former glory one day. The life came back again. The life came back again. Oh, come, come, come. This is. I'm trying not to destroy anything because you see, this is a leg of a statue. You see it? It's not just Asadi who saw what his eyes couldn't believe more than seven years after the fighting erupted. Amar, our driver, has an equally heartbreaking story. We moved through the devastated main city to what was once his house. Even the rain that suddenly came down could not wash away his tears. We entered what was once his living space An empty perfume packet, ironically named Heaven. 
three years ago, right? Yeah, three years ago. That's me. So, uh, what are your memories? It's long time. 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 It's so bad uh, or hard feeling because you know living in this, in this house for a long time and then like this situation. His son, now six-year-old Adnan's broken tricycle. A staircase that now leads nowhere. that opens no locks. Tweety Bird and Puddy Tat stickers on his child's shelves. Leaving the shell of Omar's Palmyra home, everyone was quiet. as quiet as the streets. While Amar put on a brave face and even joked, he showed us pictures of six-year-old Adnan and four-year-old Seema in better places and times than this back in Damascus. But he clearly wanted to get as far away as possible, as fast as possible. 
though the roads kept slowing him down. The only vibrant oasis in this sea of destruction was a local dhawa, catering to Russian soldiers. Fuda was grilling mouth-watering kebabs for a late lunch. Wisps of smoke hid her every now and then, like re-emerging nightmares from the past. We could make out, her eyes had seen a lot that they shouldn't have ever had to. Ahmed, you have stayed now for two years after all the destruction. Can you describe what you found when you came back to your home? كانوا ناهبين كل شيء بيوت محلات مطعم كان مليان أنا معدات مطاعم برادات كله كان مليان إيه كله شالوا معهم باتجاه الرقة وخطرة باتجاه الرقة. Okay when they came back over here actually from Homs after the destruction of the terrorists they came back here they found the place as it is here but everything was stolen and they restored it and they started the project as a restaurant from about two years. Akmed, again, can you describe before and after? Before the Daesh came here, what was Palmyra like? And what was it like when you came back two years ago? I want to tell you what was it like when you came back to the Daesh and before the Daesh and before the Daesh and when you came back to the Daesh. Before you came back to the Daesh, we were in the Jannah. In the Jannah, we were 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 in the Jannah. So when they before the time of Daesh occupation or something like that, the tourists, Palmyra was in a very good situation. A lot of tourists and the normal life and this very rich city in the same time. So when Daesh entered here, they destroyed, as you see, many things and they stole everything from the houses every everywhere. Come here, Bala. When they entered Daesh, we returned to home. جوعوا الناس وقت دخل داعش بعد ما طلع من هون رجعنا على البلد يعني مأساة جوع كانوا مجوعين العالم قتل ذبح والسرقات ونهب واغتصاب وكله. When Daesh entered to the area, they they suffered of losing everything and no materials for food and the life was misery. So everything was upside down. The ruins of Palmyra were they the soul of the city? How does he and his family feel about what they did to the ruins of the the great Roman ruins? شلون أنت وعائلتك يعني شاعرين لما هلا دمروا الآثار تبع تدمر المدينة الأسرية يعني شلون؟ يعني شو مأساة؟ واحد تاريخه بلده عريقه كله في آثاره يعني دمروه. It's a miserable. مسألة ما هي مسألة آثار يعني مسألة بلد كاملة. دمروها كله. It's a miserable way, anyway. They are so sad about the destruction of the uh, ancient city in Palmyra. And uh, it's not only destruction for Palmyra itself, it's destruction for the civilization of whole Syria. Is uh, Ahmed confident that now that control has been re-established over Palmyra, there will be reconstruction, everybody will come back, and one day he will see the same Palmyra he saw before? أنت تتوقع إنه هلا برجعة الأهالي لهون والبنى التحتية إنه زبطة ترجع الحياة بشكل مثل ما كان الحياة هلا باستمرار درجة درجة عم ترجع الحمد لله هلا الكهرب موجودة فرن الآلي موجود مي موجودة كل موجود يعني الحمد لله أمن وأمان ولا أحلى من هيك وكل ما عم نطلع درجة درجة للأحسن للأفضل step by step everything is coming back and especially the safety because of the Syrian army uh, here and uh, the life is uh, starting again actually they have already the electric and they have oven they have a little uh, other uh, services uh, so in spite of that they are managing and they are so happy about that so he does believe that the number of tourists from all over the world will come back again to Palmyra like before 
انت بتتوقع انه الاعداد بعد ما تصير تدمر بشكل صح مثل ما كانت بالاول بتتصور انه الاعداد السياحه بترجع بشكل مثل ما كانت بالاول نحن بنتمنى هالشيء ان شاء الله اكيد وي ويش ذات اكيد للافضل ان شاء that. الله وي ويش ذات ثانك يو سو ماتش ثانك يو ثانك يو على صدق ثانك يو شكرا اهلا وسهلا ثانك يو ثانك يو اول ذا بيست شكرا حبيبي نو تورست جاست يت but inside the lunch table was set for nearly 2000 russian soldiers the hangings on the wall in a few pictures told us what a thousand words would the trinity of president bashar al assad's picture a picture of the top iranian leadership including ayatollah khomeini ayatollah khamenei and president hassan rouhani and a russian flag the three allies that have turned the tables restoring about 75% of Syria to the government. Our guide Asadi also trying to restore Ahmed's niece Julia into a good mood with his kind shoulder. Outside a short while ago, an altercation with a group of Russian soldiers with no name, rank or unit tags nearly got us arrested for filming them inadvertently. We had to delete some footage. Our knowledge of the Russian language finally cooling down frayed tempers. While some armed and unarmed Russians walk nearby, two men not in army uniforms, possibly from a militia group or even Hezbollah, drove away in a pickup truck with bullet holes in the windscreen and an anti-aircraft gun in the back. Fuda meanwhile showed how deft she was with her knife slicing through the succulent meat. Her food clearly had a few takers with a local stopping to give an order. Take away shawarma rolls even in the ghost town of Palmyra. Haya Ahmed's niece meanwhile decided to have a game of peekaboo with us. Her brother a Barcelona fan was busy posing for the camera. While the kids tried to fix a broken tricycle, Haya had a Syrian jugard. As an Arabic saying goes, it's better to fix what you have than wait to get what you don't have. But someone still needed to push her older sister. <laughs> 